Alright, we are in sunny Seattle, and I am about to show you how to fix a uh, Logitech G500 mouse with a broken cord. Um, so what do you need? You need a flashlight, like this piece of shit right here. Hand crank driven, of course, with an FM radio built in. Because everyone wants an FM radio on their flashlight, right? Okay, but that said, um, you got your watch jewel kit, jewelry kit, uh, screwdriver kit, you know, you know what I mean, with the tiny bits, um, you get your snips, you got your wire strippers, uh, these guys are actually pretty nice, but woefully inadequate for this project, as I will soon demonstrate, um, and you got your mouse, which I didn't think to make a video, um, until about 90% of the way there, right? Um, just because these things happen, right? I'm trying to play my video game and the mouse is broken. So how do you fix it? Here's what you need. You need the you first step you open the mouse up, right? So from the bottom you go here. Um, hey, there's Mark. How you doing, Mark? This is going on YouTube's, man. I'm showing how I fix this shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. You show that mouse. All right. So back on track here. You you unscrew the screws at the bottom. Some of them are under these little stickers, you know, the grippers here. So you remove the one here. You remove the middle. The middle one actually um, it has one of those I broke my warranty covers where if you make the hole in it, then you can't, you're screwed, your warranty's void, but... This one broke th one month after the three-year warranty expired, so what the hell. No risk there. There's a screw here. You need to take this uh, gripper off, and you need to take this gripper off to get these two on done. Um, so four screws in total. You got the little handy screwdriver here. It's a tiny Phillips head, but, um, you know, if you're doing any kind of DIY stuff, you definitely have these at home or wherever you're working. Okay, so I removed the bottom part, right? Um, it separates from the top, and what happens is you see this guy here. Oh, and by the way, you want to you want to remove the weights. The, um, like I had no weights; I just had the weight tray in my mouse. But you press the eject button on the bottom of the mouse, and yeah, that's how you remove it. So this little shield here, um, it actually looks kind of like this when you first remove the top cover. Um, so you just, there's actually three screws here. Um, let me get some focus here on my camera. Come on, there you go. There's one screw here and two screws here. Um, all you do is remove them. You, they're the same size screws. So you can take this little overhang, this cover off. And now you're at the guts of the mouse. Um, and another detail I almost neglected to mention, um, this ribbon cable here comes off right so there's an extra PCB here for the side buttons on here um, I assume these guys as well uh, these two nice little buttons here this one doesn't have a PCB um, as you can see it actually uh, makes contact with this white switch down here and there's a mechanical assembly that either locks or unlocks the uh, uh, I don't even know the word for this thing that actually discretizes the spinning of the mouse wheel into smaller increments. Something that catches the wheel or spokes, you know. I'm not a mechanical engineer by any means, so I don't know the fancy terminology for that. But, um, so you have this guy, you took this guy off, um, and you remove this guy. Um, this is actually just a standard ribbon cable. Well, a not so standard, standard ribbon cable. Um, and the way you remove this guy is you see this little guy right here. Um, you flip this guy up. I just flipped it down actually. But um, you flip it up. Yeah, crappy camera work necessitated by the level of precision required to do this. Um, so I flip it up and then you can just pull it right out. Um, and don't panic if it comes out automatically because um, invariably it's going to be really difficult to separate this guy. Um, 
from the bottom without pulling it out. So now you're looking at the PCB. Um, you'll notice the wire actually is routed through this conduit and out the back of the mouse, or I should say the front of the mouse. Um, I guess it's ambiguous really, but um, so I what I did was you just have to use some elbow grease to get it pulled out. You can do it in stages. You know, there's different snags here that you want to pull the wire out of, and then eventually you get the wire completely out, right? And the wire itself, before I cut it like that, you know, with the shoelace braids and everything. But I'm actually going to be replacing that guy um, in a bit. So the next step is you cut the wire um, suitably close to the end. What I did, because um, I want to make sure that the um, the part that's actually the the broken part of the wire is cut off, right? So the best way to do that is to cut it as close as you can, but not cl too close, such that you don't have the wires here that you need to strip, right? So I use my snips. I just cut right through that thing. Um, the braid turned out to be quite challenged. Um, so you actually have the shoelace style braid, and then you have the the rubber covering of the wire, and then you have some aluminum foil EM shielding. You want to strip all that guy, all those guys back. Heat shrink, you can actually get underneath with this guy, cut cut a straight line, and then peel it back. Um, the foil here is a little more challenging. You have to cut it just enough that you only cut the foil and possibly the shielding, but you have to leave these four tiny little wires intact. And when I say tiny, these things are tiny. Look how big they are compared to my fingers. I mean, if you made them one millimeter thicker, this probably wouldn't have broken. Um, and from what I understand, older models of the Logitech mice had thicker wires, right? Um, it's really unacceptable for a $60 mouse to have this wiring this thin and this cheaply made. Um, shame on you, Logitech. Um, especially because this broke exactly one month after my warranty expired. There's no excuse for using wire this thin. Um, I'm sure the Chinese factories would have charged one cent more for thicker, heavier duty wire, but for a high-end mouse, um, well, as your marketing department touts it as, um, you shouldn't be using hair-thin wires for your USB cable. Um, and the other issue is, I would really like to just remove the USB cable from this header here. Um, I believe that's a 5-pin header. Yep, looks like it. So, uh, down here there's a 5-pin plug, but um, as you can see, um, let me just demonstrate here, there's this post right in the middle of it. Um, why they didn't put it over here so that the, the cable could come around like this, I don't know. But good luck ex accessing this thing. If you want to be bold and brave and try to remove the top PCB, um, I tried it, but I gave up. Um, there's two screws here. There's actually a third screw. Uh, where is that guy? Uh, well, one one avenue that you could pursue is you remove this screw here next to the crystal oscillator. But um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to splice this guy up. Um, so basically what you do is you take this guy, you cut it in a similar fashion. This is just uh, a USB cable that I got off a of spark bun. Ignore the fact that this funny connector here is on here, right? It's the, I believe it's the Type B, but um, fact of the matter is, it might be Type A, who knows. You cut this guy off so it doesn't matter. Um, you get similar colored four wires, um, and then you just... You strip these guys off. Unfortunately, this wire stripper um, it has a nice mechanism, but the wire stripper itself too bulky to um, actually strip these wires. So I'm getting a replacement pretty soon. And what you do here is you do the same thing. You just cut it off. You get those four wires out, and then you splice them with the soldering iron. And I got this pretty standard weller you know temperature setting and everything here with the soldering rod iron tip here um, so just use that guy to bridge them together with use lots of solder of course 
Um, maybe even bridge it with heat shrink wrap when you're done so that it doesn't break again. But I can't imagine um, spliced wires being any stronger, if at all, than their uh, non-spliced counterpart was before it actually broke. So, um, if you get further than me, good luck. Um, I'm sure that I'm 90% of the way here. I just need the right tool for the job, and then it'll be an easy fix. But, um, shame on you, Logitech, for using hair-thin wires and um, not providing a way to replace the entire cable easily. Um, the orientation of this header could have easily been flipped the other way, and then I could just pull the plug out here, swap in a new wire, and I'd be done. But um, that's just not how they built this thing. So, a um, couple stack overflow posts alluded to the same problem, um, and I haven't heard any success stories yet. So, if you find anything else more about replacing the actual physical wire itself, or if you work at Logitech as a technician for warranty services, let me know. Honestly, they probably just replace the damn thing anytime a customer's mouse breaks in its entirety. So, alright guys, um, thanks for tuning in. I'll definitely follow up with another video um, detailing the fix if it goes successfully. See ya!